For more on the International Labour Organizations Conference, TVC News Senior Correspondent Sharon Ejason joins me from Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Sharon, and um, congratulations to uh, Nigeria. What does this appointment mean for you know, the ILO, uh, mean for Nigeria and its role in the ILO? Yes, um, it's, it's a great day here in um, Geneva, Switzerland. And of course, it's great news for the Nigerian delegates, which consist of government, employers of labor, and labor itself. Of course, um, being, uh, Nigeria being the chairperson of um, the governing body means a lot to Nigeria as a country, Africa, and the world um, in, in general. Because with this um, um, position, it means that there is more influence whenever there is opportunities. Of course, um, um, apart from um, giving um, developing and underdeveloping um, countries um, support, Nigeria also will definitely be um, top priority. And this is also placing Nigeria on the world map um, because we have great minds and great leaders that, of course, are impacting um, in the world space. So it's a great news. Um, of course, there's a lot of things that um, the working people can actually do for the world. Um, and of course, they can create wealth, which will in turn support employers and government. And this is the second time that Nigeria would be elect, uh, would um, actually um, come to this position. The first time it would happen was in 1971, um, after the when Nigeria was um, experiencing um, the civil war. Well, right now, as we speak, we are more balanced, we are effective, we have experience, and of course, we just um, changed and transitioned into a new government. So this means a lot to the presidency, because it means that we're on the world map and um, policies that uh, are put in place will definitely be synchronized to global world standards. Right. Talk to, walk us through how uh, Nigeria became the, you know, the, the, the chairperson. And um, was it an election? Was it a selection? And how, if it was an election, was it rigorous? Talk to us about the contest. How fierce was it? Yes, um, in, at the United Nations, it's, um, they are diplomats. Um, the person representing Nigeria here is the, is, um, is, is, um, the ambassador to the country here in Geneva, Switzerland. So um, the election definitely the nomination was done some days ago. So it was something that was expected. It was just only ratified today. And by tomorrow, um, the, um, the representative from Nigeria will, will chair the meeting for the first time at about uh, 9 a.m. Geneva, Switzerland time, which will be 8 a.m. Nigerian time. Uh, it's really the first time we'll be um, addressing um, the 187 member countries um, and definitely there will be new um, information um, policies and also um, guidelines on what um, the leadership style of the country representative would be, which would definitely mean a lot to the United Nations and Nigeria and Africa at large. All right then, uh, Sharon, it just on live for us there. We'll definitely be looking at the expected outcomes for Nigerians, how it's going to benefit Nigeria and the international community. Senior correspondent, uh, Sharon Ejasson there, Light for Us from Geneva, Switzerland. Thank you. China has failed to release data on how many cremations took place in the country at the end of 2022, making obscure a key indicator that could have shed more light on the impact of the wave of COVID-19 infections that were sweeping the country at that time. The national number of cremations was emitted from recent data from China's Ministry of Civil Affairs which tracks a range of social indicators in quarterly reports. The omission underscores the lack of comprehensive data on fatalities during the country's mass COVID-19 outbreak, which began late last year, after authorities abruptly lifted stringent pandemic controls. Now, at the end of the year 2021, the World Health Organization recorded 40.1 million HIV deaths globally, and Spectrum Statistics put Nigeria's HIV burden at 1.8 million. Here in, in, here in Lagos State, the government says there is no stepping down on the control of HIV to ensure steady human capital development. Senior correspondent Jacqueline Ogo has details of steps being taken by the government. 
Nigeria's huge population has made the country a carrier of a high HIV burden in Africa. In Lagos State, the government says it is battling to reduce the spread of the ailment because a healthy people power up a vibrant economy. It has shifted its focus to the highly populated Lagos Island to ensure people know their status. Persons who test positive will be started immediately on antiretroviral drugs free of charge to ensure speedy viral suppression. When the drugs are not used as prescribed by doctors, it results to full-blown AIDS. Iga Iduganro is the latest center of attention in Lagos. The people are being made to understand that sex is not the only route through which HIV can be contracted. The transmission of unscreened blood products to patients and mother-to-child transmission are also causative factors of the spread. Everybody keeps saying, oh, but HIV has gone, HIV has gone. This is the only way we can achieve it if we continue to do sensitization screening in all the LGAs and LCDAs so that the entire citizenry are aware of what the implications of HIV is, how, what the prevention methods are. The community dwellers seem to have acquired useful tips. I do the test once in a while whenever I see opportunity of doing it like this. If you know your status, your mind will be at rest. If you have it, doesn't mean that you'll be, you know, you'll be neglected by the government or whoever because the next person, the next person, the next person, you can infect them. It's not something that you should keep in discriminate people about because it can still go. According to a 2022 statistic given by the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, 1.6 million people were recorded to be living with HIV in Nigeria. Advocates against the spread of the ailment say the government must not slow down its enlightenment campaigns to ensure the safety of lives. Jacqueline Ogo, TVC News, Lagos. Before we go, let's leave you with this cherry news. Where nine days after a Hainia operation in Rome, Pope Francis has allegedly left hospital. It was the pontiff's second stint in the hospital this year after treatment for a chest infection in March. A surgeon, Dr. Sergio Alfieri, told journalists that the Pope is recovering well and is now healthy enough to travel. The 86-year-old appeared upbeat as he left the hospital on uh, this morning. When he was asked by well wishers outside how he was doing, the Pope answered, still alive. On the way back to the Vatican, the Pope stopped briefly at Rome's Santa Maria Maggiore Church to pray. <laughs>